All right, American Jankers, I am back with a very special episode. That's right. This is the one we tell you to not do drugs and street race. Also, we tell you to wrestle on the streets, um, which is my favorite sport right now. It's an eSport. It is Rumbleverse. Uh, we're going to talk with the man, the legend, the one and only presumed dead David Langster. David Lang of Iron Galaxy Langster. Studios. Have you? The Langster. I, I, the, bit of an improv there. I, I'll let you. I'll allow it. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> what else would we have to cut that? You know, legal. My legal would have to talk to your legal. Yeah, yeah. It would be a whole thing. Just, just don't let it happen again. It's fine. I'm sorry, yeah. sir. Uh, Mr. Lang, um, you <laughs> are, you know, you're the, the top level of, of the video game industry. You've surpassed the C-suite. You're, you're above CEO. You're a oh C-3PO, right? Yeah. So t technically these days my title is just founder. Founder. Uh, C-3PO was a good bit, but it was just really confusing to business people. Yes. Um, you know, they'd kind of chuckle like, ha, 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 like I get that reference. Uh, but they didn't actually know what to do with it. So I kind of, I kind of, that, that went out of favor a couple of years ago. So I'm just going by founder. Did you ever figure out, uh, like a fake, like, did you retroactively fit something into the C3PO initialism? Uh, no, I never actually figured out anything. So like, my bit was like, like, Oh, what is this? What is the, I, I, here's what I envisioned when I did it originally as a goof. Like people say, Oh, what does a C3PO do? I'm like, Oh, basically I'm a protocol droid. You know, that'd be my follow up, you know, like uh -huh. no one ever asked that. They just chuckle uncomfortably. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see it. I can see it in some like hotel room meeting at, at E3. Someone yeah. would, yeah. But for, a, lot for bar, a lot of bar in Vegas at Dice, and it's like, what's your, what is it? See, yeah, what? Uh, oh, I didn't hear you right. Did you say, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. um, I um, actually met years ago your current CEO, Adam Boyce. Great guy. Uh, right, by the way. Huh? Sorry. Are you sorry you had to meet him? Uh, I, I it's it's okay. It was it was uh, on behest of a, a little a Japanese company that makes Walkmans. Okay. Uh, okay. and so and he was here for an event, and then and we were like, please tell us uh, embarrassing stories of your friends in the industry, uh, most sure. notably you and um your former executive assistant who gave out your your. <laughs> your phone number to everyone yeah. so it was easier to reach you uh yeah. who's now working for that by the way nintendo yeah. i believe he's, he's a he's nintendo there. third party yeah oh nice nice um yeah. see so maybe now that i called you langster uh, against your wheel maybe maybe i'll get a, a cushy job maybe maybe finally that we're how, enemies yeah it's let's, it's, let's see how if it's called for, technically it's frenemy but okay frenemy we'll, we'll now see how, we'll see how it plays out though yeah. cool cool so and he gave us a great story about um your other friend, your other friend of me, whose name escapes me right now, um, I, Johnny V. How could I forget yeah. uh, about yeah. him um, sitting down so long playing WoW that when he got up, his his leg was numb <laughs> and then he broke his leg. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's a, that's a classic. That's a classic. That that was we loved that one, but he didn't give us anything on you. So I was I was wondering if you want to throw him under the bus and actually tell tell us an Adam Boy story. Or if that would be conflict of interest in the Iron Galaxy Studios hierarchy. I, I, most of the stories I would tell would not be kind, and that would not be in, in best interest. But I, let me think if I could think of one that's just kind of cute and embarrassing, right. not menacing and embarrassing. Um, <laughs> just the word of the just the use of the word menacing right there, I think, was menacing in itself, <laughs> which is fascinating. It ticks the box, yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're even contemplating that, like, what is wrong with you? Wait, um, there's menacing yeah. story? Menacing? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll kick off a thread in the back of my brain about that. Okay. We'll, 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 if something if, comes if, up. If, I, if something pops up, I'll, 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 I'll uh, climb some time on the floor. All right. So, cool. So, this is kind of a different episode for us. You know, two episodes in, we're already breaking the format. I'm already tired of things. Uh, and, you know, Rumble first came out. And we we are mutuals on Twitter, and I was like, I'm gonna abuse that that uh, you know that virtual friendship. Since I was sure. liking to play Rumbleverse, I was like, oh, he wants to promote the shit out of that game. Uh, I'll have him come on the show. It's not a janky game. We're not, and usually it's all about presenting two janky games uh, as a surprise to a guest. And it's yeah, yeah. it was no surprise to you that we were gonna yeah. uh, play some Rumbleverse, and that's gonna happen here. But um, I think that Rumbleverse has. How how did it not become a janky game? Because we're talking about a, 
a lot of jank adjacent yeah. uh, references here because um in worlds of like wrestling wrestling is janky tv if you think about it and it's it's yeah, yeah. it's it's janky you know it's it's kind of the most polished you could make carny art i think it's love a jank love yeah. it's kind of like really yeah it's respected jank it's not it's not the bad jank it's the good jank it's yeah. the good jank yeah and it's yeah. it's very much american jank the way we watch wrestling yeah. even even when we're watching you know new japan or uh triple a in, in mexico you know it's like there's a lot of american influence um and so and you you brought that into just online gaming and especially um you know um battle royale games those are, yeah, are, are yeah, kind of yeah. janky yeah. and how what, was there a department of let's not make this janky? How, how do you tackle <laughs> it, such such a task? No, so I you know I think I think most jank in games is never intended, right? And then uh, you know you either run out of time or you run out of money or something. And this this project has been uh, one of the most interesting development cycles I've ever been involved with in any company ever, not just Iron Galaxy, but like we you know we signed it with our first publisher, who shall go nameless for now. Um, they, they gave us a really good deal. We were super happy with it. And then about, I don't know, nine, 10 months in, they said, you know what? We're changing directions with, with our portfolio. We love you guys. We love the game, but it's just not a fit for us anymore. And so we're going to, just going to, we're going to, we're going to let you guys go on your own journey, go find another partner. Peace be with you. And it's like, huh, well, that's, that's kind of awkward. Uh, like what do we, now we don't have money coming in for this thing, but what are we going to do? But we also realized, you know, we'd spent 10 months basically making a demo at that point. Right. And so we shopped it around and we didn't have to shop it very long. Epic, you know, they were just kind of getting into their store stuff and figuring out what their, what their strategy is. And, uh, you know, I've known, we've worked closely with Epic for over a decade now, right? Actually, technically back to the midway days, I was working with Epic back then too. So we know each other really, really well. And we had a game that they seemed was a really good fit for them. And then they kind of just kept, you know, we were supposed to ship this game originally about a year ago. And then they're like, it's not ready yet. Have some more time, have some more money. And then we're going to ship it in February. And, you know, we did the whole announce at the game awards, right? And it's like, Hey, it's coming in February. And then two days later, we're like, psych, it's not anymore. It got such a good <laughs> response at the game awards. And that, that, that first public beta test we did or public network test we did that we're like, huh? And Epic's like, you know what? Have a little more time. Have a little more money. Let's make sure we we deliver the game you want to deliver, and we want you to deliver. And they let us. They let us just keep noodling on it for you know nine more months, ten more months, and then here we are. And like, if we would have shipped a year ago, we would be having a more janky conversation about the game for sure. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but and, I think and, it's just been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you know because you know they got some experience in in, in the yeah. online world of games. They had some shooters. Little, I think. Nice, yeah, something maybe you've heard of a little kind of a niche thing called Fortnite. Yeah, maybe, but like it's, it's also, a phone it's just, game, right? <laughs> it's like a, you build some castles. I think that's a not, I think that's a clone of something. I'm not sure exactly what it yeah. is. Yeah, it was their PUBG, right? Yeah, it was their Android their Android PUBG knockoff. Oh, okay, so. cool. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, the uh, but yeah, they've been really like it's just different when you're working with a developer, not a publisher. I mean, they they are a publisher. They're building out a publishing team, but the core of that company is still like developer mindset. Right. And it just, it's, you just, you have different conversations with them than you do like normal funding partners. Right. Right. And you know, it's not, which isn't to say like, you know, uh, an old, old boss, my Matt booty, who now like runs a, a Microsoft game studios. Um, he, you know, worked for him. Yeah. It was like, I was like two people removed from him in the org chart at Midway. And he used to have this, this statement or, uh, this refrain he would do that, you know, someone would come to him and say, oh, Stranglehold, it, why is it getting extra time? Why is it getting extra money? And then Matt would always say, compelling content creates opportunities, right? And, you know, it's not that Epic was doing it on charity. It's that we we were producing compelling content. And it created opportunities for us when Epic's like, we need to invest more in this. Like, let's make it happen. So, you know, but not every publisher would have done that. And uh, shout outs to Epic for giving us what we needed. Yeah, and, and I think looking at their core free to play games of like if you look at like Fortnite, uh Rocket yeah, yeah, League yeah. and Rumbleverse, it kind of makes Fall sense. Fall Guys now too, right? Uh sorry? Oh, Fall Guys. Fall yeah, guys yeah, yeah. Too, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they got that. So so it's like yeah, they have a good, you know, it's like we have the shooting one, the car one, the the wrestling <laughs> one 
and yeah. the just like you know wa- like have fun you know kind good of party like, game yeah yeah good party game so it makes sense in the lineup it makes sense that they gave you time to to polish it but what i'm thinking is like you have the opportunity with with an online game nowadays and pretty much any game nowadays to to have it be you know a work in progress always you can always fix things add things but um how do you balance the oh this is good enough to like because you could work on it forever yeah, yeah. pretty much with yeah. with epic money if they if they were willing to how do they go or how do you at igs go um okay this is this is as good as it's gonna get before we put it out there and see what has to be adjusted uh to well, uh, the audience yeah for, first off let me give the, my perspective on like so this is i didn't really have a lot to do with rumbleverse per se i don't want to be very clear about that like it's not my game it's uh you just you profit know, from it, it. I just, yeah, I just harvest the money yes. and then buy, buy Bentleys and shit. That's I understand, I yes. Like, I, am a, I am a founder at a production yeah. company as well. By the that's way, what I season, do pass, season pass uh, one launched yesterday, everyone. So, oh, you know, awesome. go, go put some money in your boy's pocket. Go figure it out. <laughs> but no, like, the reason I say that is like, I'm not, this is not like, I, I have a different perspective on it than like Lars, Adam Hart, Ramon, Adam Boys, uh, you know, like um, all, all just the incredible team that put this thing together. Right. And so I, I don't want to be clear. I'm not speaking for the team when I, when I say stuff like this, but like, you know, I, I think, um, sorry, what was the question again? I went so worried about the pre. How do you, this, how, oh, yeah, 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 wh- working yeah. at something like that is how do you decide, well, this is the moment we launch it. Cause again, you know, launching it, publishing it nowadays is, is mostly marketing from my understanding yeah, yeah. because, you know, launching it's just pressing a button. You're not pressing discs. You're not making boxes. You're not, uh, get, getting retailers on your side. No, but you know, there is, you know, you do have to plan out months in advance, right? Because you do need to plan, you know, okay, we're going to reach out to the press. We're going to make sure things, you know, we're going to reach out to influencers. We're going to reach out to whatever other marketing spend we're going to do. And that stuff needs to be planned. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so when so, do you go like, okay, this is good enough. Let's get yeah. PR and marketing going. Yeah. So it, it, to, to your point of like, you can work on something forever. Like that's absolutely true. And it's one of the, the things with, with games that's difficult, but like what we, I, what I hope we always do. And I believe we did in this case is like, what is the most important parts of this game, right? Like, it has to be joyful. Uh, you know, it has to be it has to be fun to, even when you lose. You have to be able to have a laugh when you get, like, thrown into the ocean or whatever, right? And it has to be, like, just easy to get into and, like, you know, technically pretty smooth experience for people, right? And, and you know, that fourth one, any launch of this scope, you're going to run into some hiccups, but I think we're already largely past it, so, like, got over that in a hurry. And w- when we're confident that those pillars are there, if maybe this thing that's like a B tier concern or a C tier concern isn't quite up to a hundred percent, we'll talk about it, but that's not going to be the decision driver. Really. It's like this experience is governed by like these couple of key factors. And when we feel we delivered on those that like, we think is ready. Yeah. And I, I would think that as much as you can focus test and, and beta test something, um, whatever size that sample group is getting it in yeah. front of millions of people with Epic, it's always going to bring, you know, I bet there's, things you're learning now and gonna learn into yeah. season one that uh you would never learn with any beta test and then you'll 100%. be able to go like, oh okay this is this is stuff we're gonna adjust and this is gonna start we're, we're gonna work on yeah you know we tried we did three network tests right and i was I, my account was not authorized into any i i wished listed and i you know i didn't want to pull listed, really uh yeah I, cause, it's weird because the last couple were open that's weird Maybe I don't yeah. open the Epic Games thing enough to know. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be a you problem, Gus. I'm not sure. What. <laughs> hey, hey, I th- I think either you saying it or Epic's uh, selection process saying it made it clear it was a me problem. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's hope it's a prior, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, no, it's it's one of those things where, um, you know, you're doing network tests, but like, it's not the same as turning the game on day one. And just like, I, I think we ran some stats, we pulled some stats yesterday for a company meeting and there's already been like half a million matches played, something Jeez. like that. Some obscene like that. Right. And you know, there's so much data we got about like, you know, everything from game balance issues, bugs we never saw before, you know, what, how can we tweak and improve matchmaking times, all of those sorts of things. Like that, despite our best efforts, like just would never realistic that we'd figure those out until we actually launched. And so um, now it's up to us just to get everything cleaned up as quick as we possibly can and, uh, you know, keep people coming back for more. 
Nice. And, you know, speaking of the unavoidable jankiness of launching a, a an online title, it seems that the, the rule still stands in 2022 is that no matter how how much you think you've scaled your your server, you know, server budget correctly, you will always hit uh, uh, you always need more. Right. Because that was the that was the problem we're here in the, in the first few few days. It seems that there was more people wanting to play our game that even Epic could have predicted. And they know a few things about online gaming. Yeah, we it it exceeded our expectations. That's the simplest way to put it. Um, you know, there it was. It's it's it, 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 I get, from the outside looking in, like I get people were frustrated by that. I told I would you know just, just if firing up this game I'm excited for, and you're hit with like a hundred thousand person queue. Like I get yeah. that's probably a little frustrating, right? Um, but we, yeah, it's like we got we got through those issues really really quick. And if you did get turned off by that stuff, come back now because right now it's smooth as butter, and uh, you should be able to get on no problem. Yeah. So if you're, you're turned off by that, come back check it out. And by the way, Dimension Season One has launched. You uh, have uh, yesterday, uh, uh, um, August eighteenth. Yeah, um, yeah. This is ten a.m. Central Time. I'm not sure if I mentioned that yet. <laughs> yes, but it has. this uh, it's, it's this episode there. is going to be coming out like uh, next week. So it's it, okay. You know, it's been a week out. It's yeah. it's out. If you're watching this, you're either on, on the page- grind, then friend. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're just here. You're, you're behind on the grind. You're if you are uh, on the American Jake pa- Patreon, you're less so behind on the grind. Yeah. But if you're watching the free version of this, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you're two weeks behind on this. Like I've yeah. been getting good. Everyone's been getting good. We know the best special moves. We know uh, what what is the best melee weapon right now? Is is it the stop sign? Oh, we don't like to say there's the best anything in the gust. They all have their place. It's it, I'm I'm telling you, it's not the baseball bat, Dave. It's not the baseball bat. <laughs> so my money. What, what what I really like is the um. So the way I like to play is I like to have like longer protracted fights, and I build stamina, mm-hmm. and then I use weapons that drain stamina. So like right. the chair, like the like mm. the chair strikes, really really drain opponent's stamina. So then if I can stamina break them, get them super low. I have a lot more options than they do. So for my money, it's the chair. But I do think the the consensus would be like street sign, stop sign, one way sign would be most people's favorites because you know you got that spin attack that's like an AOE thing. You're really good for like just clearing space for yourself. Yes. Um, so this is this is good because because what we're gonna do uh, in the in the end of the show, the last thing we're gonna do on this show is kind of like uh, when Drew in episode one like coached me on how to fly a yeah. plane. You're gonna coach yeah, yeah. me on how to win my first match because I've played a lot, but I haven't okay. haven't won. I think my my has has been uh, ninth place. It's been okay. fun. Like I'm not complaining. It's just that yeah, I yeah. need to learn how to better manage. And I have a problem in in most uh, fighting games. I don't block enough. You know. Yeah. Because be a problem you know, in Rumbleverse. Yeah. Because because blocking. Let me tell you something. Like not on video games, maybe, but you know, for life, blocking is for suckers. Right. <laughs> Attacking is for winners. <laughs> yeah, I mean. There's a couple of ways you can look at that, I suppose. But sure, yeah. let's, accept, let's accept your premise. You know let's what? You know what the best defense is, Dave? A good Attacking. offense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's what I'm thinking. But we'll get to that. Um, and I, I think we have a, a link here on, on oh, my no. side. Mm, nope, no. Uh, Lucas has only said yeah. So we don't have your your complete jank profile but i do know some things about you in your career dave uh and maybe i but maybe i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna fall on my face here and if i do i'm editing it out but are you (laughs) are you the person that once told a story about launching one of the first xbox live enabled titles that had the wrong ip address to connect to that was two different games. Those two (laughs) okay so let's go with that dave um so from from that to 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 this how how let's go back to the beginning of of dealing with online video games how did that yeah. how did that exp- experience affect you and and get you ready for the anxieties that would follow yeah so we um i was at microsoft so i was i was at a uh, game developer called sculptured software and then that place kind of went like they they that that studio forked into two different studios it became one became kodiak interactive the other became acclaim salt lake and I went to Kodiak Interactive, and there we were working on a game for Microsoft called MLB Inside Pitch. And the we'd never done, like, no one had done an online game for a console before. Like, obviously, for the PC, they've existed for a while. But, like, Xbox Live, what is it? How does it work? Or all this stuff. And then, so we, we really had a lot of things to figure out. And those were very exciting times. 
Like, because like, there's not like a, you know, right now you could Google like rollback net code. How does it work or whatever? And you can find like, there is nothing out there. Like you are literally, you're going to GDC hoping someone says too much one day. You can take it <laughs> home and use it. But basically it's, it's a bunch of developers kind of independently inventing a bunch of things on different games. And, uh, it was me, uh, a guy named Jim Young. We're primarily working on the online stuff and Jim works for us now. He worked on Rumbleverse. Hi Jim. Um, and, uh, that was so, so fun figuring all that stuff out and it launched. And then, you know, you realized all the things you didn't test for, like, for example, like back then you, you didn't really test for griefing. You didn't really think about griefing. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, oh, what if your opponent pauses the game and never unpauses it? Oh. oh yeah. We probably should have a timer on that. So it automatically, like things that are common every day now, right. like you Unfortunately really, so. Yeah. Yeah. You learned those lessons the hard way. Like how just people are trolling and, um, so like all the parts we did were pretty cool, but all the parts we never thought about, or, you know, that's not really fair. Like impossible for us to predict is probably a better way to put it. Like those made it a real bummer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet. And, and, and I mean, in this case, I, I believe you, you, you solved it. And I would have to, to, to guess from, from a layman's perspective here that it had to do something with the fact that there were actually Xbox live servers to connect to before, you know, like actually connecting. Yeah peer-to-peer because -peer. like if you were a playstation 2 title back then most of the games were peer-to-peer -peer, and you wouldn't remember just... the dnas pop-up the dnas thing yeah, yeah that's that's i still it's ingrained in my brain painfully yes <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I guess you know because people you know that didn't live through that age dave they they don't get it you would buy a it's dvd days. with a game yeah. on it and that was the game there was like yeah. no day one patch Hope there you was... like it yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah. but so but actually, in, in, in the case of those games, what did happen? Was it, like, was it a patch that fixed yeah, it? Yeah, so Xbox Live had kind of a, I don't even remember, let me think back to that exact timeline. This was, this was like what, 2000 and The launch one. of X 2002. So Xbox came out in 2002. 2001. Xbox Live came out okay. like a year after. Yeah, so this is like 2002. And uh, so they yeah, got 20 years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm sure some of the details I'm not going to quite remember right, but like I, the thing I remember, I, do you remember, this is a brief digression. Were you part of that? Did you ever get the Xbox Live like beta test stuff? Like were you playing Micro Machines on Xbox no, Live? Before? No, no. Like I got oh, into, I, well, first of all, I didn't I didn't use Xbox Live on the first Xbox. I used X-Link Kai because I was a okay, yeah, pirate. Yeah, yeah. So, and and yeah. I got into it like, like I got my, my Xbox in like 2004, so. Okay. Yeah. Cause like, this is uh, I don't know if anyone will remember this. I don't know who your audience is, but like if you, if you got into the beta test for Xbox live, they shipped you a disc with a bunch of games on them. Mm -hmm. And one of them was like micro machines, but worked on Xbox live. And it's pretty much, it was like my, it would have been my game of the year for 2002. <laughs> yeah. I'd say that more than anything else. But um, yeah, I think, I think they came out of the gates with updating the ability to update out of the gates on that project. It would live. make sense because yeah, you know they I were the one, did, yeah. the one console that had like a central. You could just connect to Xbox Live with no game disc on. It just like to get like news updates. Yeah, uh, and they had a hard drive in every console, so they could yeah. count on that to like push a patch. Yeah. You, you know what's funny though? I remember like um, Microsoft was doing their their big tour when they figured out they're doing Xbox. They were bringing like prototype to all developers in the U.S. and like showing it to us. And I was in the meeting with them. And they're making a big deal of the hard drive and the Ethernet port for just the reasons you you stated. But I, you know, he's like so like, uh, like you would never think of this. Like you might think of this now, but it'd be like a tertiary concern. But at the time, like, what do you mean you're not gonna have a web browser? You know? <laughs> oh yeah. And they're, they're like, no, it's not for that. You know, it's for the yeah. like, but yeah, but it's got an Ethernet port. It has to. Like my brain was like melting, <laughs> right? Yes. Now of course that was absolutely the right decision. The other thing I think when I think about the earliest Xbox Live, do you remember like all the voice modification stuff they had in there? <laughs> yes, you could have your special little like they had like uh, presets for voice modification because because yeah. the X because the Xbox itself did not come with a headset, but the Xbox Live kit did. So yeah, yeah, you would, yeah, you'd yeah. get that little headset. Um, yeah, that was yeah, fun. That was classic stuff. That was like another great one of like you don't know what you don't know when you're doing something no one's done before. Yeah, and they they were so worried about like kids and personally identifiable information. Like they were way ahead of everybody else thinking about that stuff way back then. And that's why they did the voice stuff to my, to my understanding. Anyway, mm, I, I, was, I never I didn't work at Microsoft then, but like, and then just like, but how did just no one ever used it? Cause it, it just, it was but just also, weird. Yeah. Wouldn't it seem like the, the, the person trying to do bad things with kids would, could also use that to like master. Billy, 
Billy. Yeah. What are you, is your mom home? You'll Billy? never know. Yeah. Oh. What a school do you go to? Um, hey, what's your favorite color, Billy? But the good thing is, like back then, no one had like uh, VPNs or anything like that. Like right. you would get to to that person's home really quick. But also, the police probably didn't know what a, an IP address was twenty years ago. Yeah, there was personally probably no swatting back then either. You know, <laughs> free swatting. What, what we're learning today, Dave, in this episode is yeah. that. Uh, things are never uh, just good or bad. You know, the flow of time brings with it changes that are good and bad. Did the swatting happen in Brazil or is it just America? It, I have not heard of, of something yeah. similar to that here yet. <laughs> yeah. uh, but there's certainly very bad, uh, very bad internet When, when I come visit, I'll, I'll bring that as an import with me next time I come visit. I'll just well, we certainly, we certainly have the, the, yeah. the you know, police uh, uh outfits that would you know the, the people who are like our own swat that you could probably sick on someone but i think it's harder to get them to come out for something like maybe like you would need to actively bribe them i guess oh, okay because yeah, like there was a case yeah. there was a case in rio that we found out a few years ago that you know they're like they're the the most you know militarized police in all of brazil because of all kinds of reasons um and um so they have what we call the cavero which is this huge bulletproof like almost tank like vehicle um and um we found out that the police was uh renting it out to drug dealers <laughs> okay. so for about for about like i think like two hundred thousand dollars a day you could rent out one so like if you wanted to move some money uh yeah, yeah, se yeah. securely yeah. you could get a swat uh you know team to to put you inside the tank to move your money whatever which, it takes which I think, or yeah. you know, by itself warrants that uh, Fast and Furious comes back and does another installment <laughs> in, in Brazil. <laughs> uh, let me see if Lucas has pulled up your 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 history here on on Janky Games. Um, all right, it is here. Dave Lang, video game credits and biography on Moby Games, and uh, you can see this on your screen, Dave. The people came yes, out. Yes, I can. Um, yeah, I can. So, oh, this this one is not janky. Well, well, fighting. You can explain to me why some fighting game people might think it's janky. Okay. Um, you worked apparently on the core team on Street Fighter Three Third Strike Online Edition, which was the re-release for 360 and PS3. I love this re-release. I oh, love the you. the way you had like the challenges to recreate uh, moments, yeah, yeah, including yeah. the moment you know the Daigo yeah, yeah. parry stuff like that. Um, but some people are like, oh, it doesn't have rollback. Is rollback the only way to do netcode for fighting games now? Well, so it super has rollback in it. Oh, it has? Uh, is, G it, like, it, is GGPO rollback? Is that what I want to know? Yes, it is. So oh, GGPO okay. is the, is the or originator of rollback. GGPO okay. is. And then so, subsequently, people have kind of figured out what it does and how it goes. And they've come with their, like, we have our own flavor of it for stuff right. we do now. Right. Um, but GGPO is the grandfather of them all. Like, nice. So you guys were ahead of everyone because this is 2011. Yeah, that that was actually a Capcom thing. Like Capcom, like there was a, a our executive, our producer there, um, ended up being a guy named Derek Neal. Mm -hmm. And Derek is super into fighting games, like really, really kind of like one of those people that like, can get into the game and figure out all the nuts and bolts of every character really quickly. He's also like a really good producer. And f from the, like the first pitch meeting, he's like, we have to have GGPO because because the thing we were competing with is like. So GGPO is actually like a emulation platform on Yes, PC. that's the first time right. I saw it. It was was yeah. a friend of mine who actually works at Capcom, who's the who's the uh lead um guy at Capcom here in Brazil, the marketing guy. Oh nice. Um, yeah. and he's super into fighting games. So I remember when when GGPO came out, he was like, Oh, there's this new emulator to play, you know, fighting games yeah. online. Um but Derek's basically like it can't be a worse experience than that. It has to be better than that. So we right. need to like have rollback like they do, and we also need to have all these other challenges. We need to look better. We need to be a higher resolution, you know. And so he had a clear vision for what he wanted, which made it super easy to build it because we knew exactly yeah. what we were doing. Um, but yeah, that that was our that was our company's first big break that game. Cool. And uh, we did a really good job. I think in, in, through the lens of Jank, there was some things that really really hardcore Street Fighter Three fans were upset about, like you know, like really really subtle stuff, like if you um. Well, some subtle and some not so subtle, but like the most subtle I can think of is like Ryu, you know, on one of the stages he comes down and sets down his rucksack, right? Uh -huh. And then it's supposed to stay standing up like straight, like vertical. And then if someone gets body slammed by him or just like someone does a big impact by him, it's supposed to crumple and fall then. Okay. Right? 
And I think in our version, like it would fall right away before anything happened. And people are like, oh my God, it's not arcade perfect. I'm furious. How does that um, happen, Dave? How do you fuck that up? <sighs> it turns out it was, it was fucked up in the version we ported. So, yeah. Oh, okay. So there's... <laughs> How do you, interesting thing though when, when you're how doing is that process games, right? wouldn't you just go like to whatever wouldn't you just go to mame <laughs> isn't that what uh, nintendo does <laughs> yeah well i don't know what nintendo does but the way we did it was we started with the ps2 version oh okay and we and then we hand fixed bugs so the ps2 version was an arcade port and so they already did all that super super hard work of like figuring out like okay how do we make the cps3 machine like work on a playstation or whatever right or an xbox and so, like, why, you know, let's not redo that. But it was, um, like, there, it is an interesting thing of, like, there's some there's some things that in Third Strike that I think the developers would consider bugs, but the community is accepted as part of the game. Yeah. And, like, figuring out what to fix and what is more like that and not fixing those things was, was uh, interesting, like, conversations on that project. Nice. Yeah. And just the one thing that this makes me think of uh, and think of about, about Jank is how much especially with Street Fighter that has so many games and, and versions and revisions, yeah, yeah. is how it's hard to get that history right. And it kind of happens with some, like, movies. Makes me think of the time I was trying to track down all the different versions of Die Hard 3 on DVD because all of them had different <laughs> extras. Because, like, if you want to play, like, the challenges you guys made for Street Fighter 3, you have to play that version. Because if you play the anniversary collection, it does not have that. But it's a completely universe, different version, yeah. Yeah, but it does have like second impact and and things like that. And then if you want to play, by the way, just a little, <laughs> just give some trivia about that. By the way, before you jump in there, so like the it's unfortunate that is the way it is, but it's for really it's it's one of those things that doesn't make sense. It's a stupid business thing. Yeah. Like we had signed a um we we basically did a royalty buyout agreement with Capcom, right? And so they gave us like the money they owed us plus whatever we negotiated. And like, okay, we don't have to track royalties. Cause like at some point when the game's not making much money anymore, it costs more money to do all the bookkeeping and accounting than it does actually like paying out the royalties, right? So it's a very normal thing. All companies yeah. do it. Believe me, I we released a book no one buys. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So we did a royalty buyout agreement with them for third strike. And then they're like, oh shit, we want to put it in this edition. And then they instead they think it's what it called me. I would have been like, yeah, use our version, please. Right. Yeah. We'll figure it out. But then they they said, oh, we can't because we did this buyout already. We can't use it any further. And so they recommissioned a whole other version of it, which as long as they did like, you know, Impact uh, and all those other versions of of Street Fighter 3, it kind of makes sense because they had to do those other ones too. But it is kind of a bummer from my perspective. I get why why they had to make new ports and and all of that. But like, you know, just like kind of the content, because I bet you that um, whatever is in Anniversary edition if whoever does the next collection is not digital ocean it's not yeah. going to be there um and it's kind of people are going to have to start from scratch it's it's just a weird it's and it's the same with movies and and all that stuff it, it depends on who you contract that out and and what yeah. the contracts and who keeps that stuff around if a studio yeah. goes under it, it is actually a kind of a weird thing too when you're thinking about like you know you have to think it's impossible to think about things over like the long enough timeline to predict everything that's going to happen. Like it's a little yeah. when you're running a company, but like, you know, like they, everyone associates, everyone that knows fighting games anyway, associates the Xbox and PlayStation version of third strike with iron galaxy. Right. Mm-hmm. Like they're like, they know we did it and for better, or for worse, that it is what it is that we did it. Um, and then that version comes out and we start getting all these emails and tweets about it. Like, this is why, wow, how do you, this, what's about this problem? What well, this is, how is this worse than like, dude, we didn't have, explain to like hundreds of people that we had nothing to do with it. Yeah. It was like, yeah, like, I, what do you do there? Right? So you don't like what, the, you know, so it just, it was awkward, but yeah. Yeah. And, and from what I hear from, from digital ocean folks of, by the like, way, did I mention that Rumbleverse season one launched yesterday? Um, season did one, uh, August 18th yeah. yesterday, August 18th. Yeah. Season one is out. Passed. Oh yeah, battle pass. Go, go, I don't know if I mentioned it yet. Do you get what do you get with that? What we're talking about. Yeah. What do you get with that? What we're talking. Oh, sorry. What do you get? What comes? What is a season pass for oh, Rumble? Oh boy, what, what does so it have? So it's, so it's your traditional kind of Fortnite style battle pass. Uh huh. Where there's you're earning your way through progression, and every couple if you don't own the battle pass, every couple tiers you get something for free for your progression, mm-hmm. right? But if you own the battle pass, you get amazing content at every tier. Oh. Ending in a squats chicken <sighs> chicken suit. So basically it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a value at any price. It's a bargain at $10 is the way I like to think. Just $10. Yeah. Even if you're not playing rumblers, you should buy it. You should buy it to support, uh, the Coke zero Dave just drank. 
I was I had the, oh I thought the label covered. No. Which no. Are, are they a sponsor? Uh, they are. Um, they are not yet. But I would not yet is the correct answer. Yeah. yeah I would. I would fill it. I. I'm sorry, Coca Cola. I would fill it with Pepsi. I'm a Pepsi guy. Okay. I'm not you, a Pepsi you know man. A little, yeah. little yin, a little yang on this podcast, then. Yeah, That's, exactly. Yeah. A little, a little lang, a little lens at him. Um. So, <laughs> so yeah. So, anyways, and and it just because that I remember the first time I had that talk, I was I was I had lunch with uh Frank Cefaldi in San Francisco like years ago, Frank's and right. they well, Frank. yeah. great guy, great guy, and he worked on uh Ultra. No, he worked on the the collection, but right before that, um, Nintendo had. Uh, kind of got the exclusive on Ultra Street Fighter mm. 2 in which they added Violent Ken from the Capcom <laughs> versus SNK things and yeah, like yeah. and and how have disowned that version because that version is not in any collection and it like it still ends at Hyper Street Fighter 2 which was the anniversary from anyways so yeah. all I want to say is Street Fighter's janky that's that's that was my that was it has my some conclusion. jank to it, yes. It has some, it has jank, some jank. So let's go. Oh, my God. I am a huge MK nerd. Okay. Uh, that's how I became friends with uh, Hector Sanchez, who's now at yeah, Epic. Yeah, Hex, uh, Hex is the best. Is, he's a great guy. Um, yeah. And um, you worked on Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, which he, I think, was uh, did QA for. No, I think he was already producer. Yeah, I think he was a producer on that. Yeah, I think okay. he was a producer on that. Okay, so but so he, you want to share the blame? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. So I I worked on this in name only. I was studio tech director uh, at okay. Midway Chicago, and so I kind of got put on a bunch of credits that I don't really belong in, just right. because I was there. But yeah, the, the MK team was pretty self contained, and they didn't really need a lot of advice from someone that doesn't know anything about Mortal Kombat. So they they were you're not you're, you're not a yeah. you're not a Mortal Kombat guy. <laughs> I wasn't adding a lot of value to them. Let's just say that. No, you're like a Chicago Kombat. guy. You're a Chicago guy, but yeah, you're yeah. you don't you don't play well. So uh, no, it's it's more just like I wasn't. I, I I growing up, I shouldn't say growing up. When I really got into fighting games, which was college, I really mm -hmm. played the, started playing the shit out of those. I played Tekken almost. Oh, okay, yeah, and, and, and so, you know, I played, I when played Tekken was HQ huge, growing up, MK was yeah. not huge. Like, well, MK's... not only it just it's it, you know it's like you you like what you like, right? Yeah, and I think yeah. I recognize MK is like uh, like a Always, always, always a very well put together product, right? Um, but mm, just my own personal. Mm, there was a generation there, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> there was a yeah. generation there right before that one. <laughs> um, well, modern era. It's called modern era. Yeah. All right. So NBA Ballers, TNA Impact, Stranglehold. I, I actually worked on Chosen One a lot. I did some. I I did. This was me. Is that the second yeah. one? Chosen One, I think, is the third one. Oh, there were three of them. So there, there was, I, oh, I Phenom's never... the third one. No, Phenom's the third one. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. So, yeah, Chosen One is the third one. Phenom is the second one. Yeah. Those games were cool. So, if, if, if people don't know, that was exactly what the title says. It was about playing some basketball, but also about being a baller. Yeah, the it was interesting, those games, because, like, the, the premise of Ballers was, okay, we have NBA Jam, right, and we have Mortal Kombat. And, like, what if we smashed them together and we could make a basketball game that had some one-on-one -on -one kind of fighting like nuance to it. And so, you know, it started off as like a one-on-one -on -one street hoops game. And then right. su subsequently they made it like some 2v2 and I think even 3v3 modes in it eventually. But it started off as like this, this mashup of Jam and MK. And it never really delivered on that, I don't think anyway. I think it ended up being like 85% Jam and 15% MK. Um, but I always thought that was a really cool idea and I totally get why they wanted to make that game. But I just, I don't think they ever delivered on like the MK part of it. Uh, oh. I should say we. I shouldn't say they. I should say. I, I really liked that era of games. Like I, I didn't play ballers that much. I, I think I, I played the first one a bit, but um, like I remember that FIFA Street was huge back then, and like yeah. I'm not a huge sports guy in general, and not, and not a huge uh, sports uh, video game guy. So those were my, were my, my jam. Let's say because I was too young to be, <laughs> really be into NBA Jam in the in the '90s. So um so yeah you know bring those back now uh, get your 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 money with uh wrestle uh, rumble rumble fest <laughs> how did i forget the name <laughs> rumble fest wrestlemania rumble, rumble fest is, yeah wrestle wrestlemania is out now on epic right <laughs> yeah. season 3 um yeah. all right so and um let's see what else sounds uh um special thanks does not count um then Fallout 76, all that stuff, is it's mostly... Ah, oh, okay. This is what I want to talk about. So, before Rumbleverse... Yes. Iron Galaxy did two 
very good and 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 you know often forgotten but not because of their quality video games which i really like which is dive kick yep. and killer instinct starting with season two the new version yeah, season two the one, okay, yeah. yeah the, the version yeah, yeah. you can play right now on pc and xbox so let's let's talk first about killer instinct how how was that? Because that was like I remember I was I was working as a game journalist back then uh, when they announced this, uh, and it was really a a weird of like how how are they even gonna do it? Because like the studio that made season one got bought by Amazon, right? Correct. Yeah, Double Helix. Yeah. Oh, Double Helix. Yes. So and then they announced shout out uh, to Double Helix. Shout outs. Um, you know, hope you guys are doing uh stuff at Amazon. Um and um. And then Microsoft announced at E3 of like, oh, there's going to be a season two. Don't worry about it. We got a new studio. It's Iron Galaxy. And then you guys did what? Like a couple seasons? I remember a bunch of characters. We did season two, season three, and then the Steam version was the last thing we've done. Okay, cool. And how was that? How was picking up a game, you know, an active online game, but not that you didn't develop? We're like, here you go. Keep making this. It's interesting because like, you know, our studio... For those who maybe, you know, this is the first time learning about us or you you know, you've heard Iron Galaxy before, but maybe you don't know too much about us. Most of what we do is helping other people make their games. Like we, we like backfill teams that maybe like, oh, okay, we need like 10 more rendering people to get this game out the door or we need people to help fix UI bugs or whatever it is. And so You're Michael Clayton a lot of, of video games. Yeah, yeah, we're, fi- we're the fixer essentially, right? We do a lot of porting as well. Like, you know, we help bring Skyrim to Switch. We help bring Overwatch to Switch, stuff like that. And that, that's the bulk of the business. And occasionally we make a game like Rumbleverse, which season one launched yesterday. I don't think I've mentioned that before. Season one um, of Rumbleverse is a season one Rumbleverse yeah, out now. August 18th. I don't think I mentioned $10 that. will get you <laughs> everything you want, need, and more. A value at any price. But yeah, the, uh, but it was going, so it's like we were uniquely positioned because we're used to like jumping into code bases that we're not familiar with, getting up to speed really quickly and becoming super hyper efficient at like, you know, doing things. But that tested the limits of this because, like, you know, we got the deal done, and we went to Double Helix, and uh, I, I don't. Double Helix was so gracious. Like, we went out there for a week, and we got a boot camp on their engine from them. And it's like, okay, here's how we do this. Here's how we do this. Here's why we did this. Here's this thing. Here's this thing. See this button, the editor. Never touch that. It crashes the editor. You know, like all these things. <laughs> yes. like this, right? It's the so, stuff you need to know. So, but then we, from there, we had three months to get TJ Combo ready for E3, and that was a blur. That three months, I barely remember any of it. I just remember showing up at E3 and TJ Combo's there and like, holy cow, we did it. You know, like, I don't know how, but we did it. And um, and then from there, you know, things just got better and better and better. And by the end of season two, I think we finally figured out what it means for, you know, Killer Instinct to have an Iron Galaxy kind of imprint on it and what we want it to be to take it forward. And we knew how to make characters inside and out. And our production was just like super, super tied up. And then we did season three, and season three was joyous. It was so fun to do. We got a lot more latitude with the characters, um, and we were just a lot more confident, and we kind of had our voice. You guys brought the Battletoads in. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. Rash. Yeah, Rash is one okay, of the best characters. Yes. What, yeah, we had Arbiter in there. We had General Rom. Yes. I, I think oh, we had yeah. one other crossover that I'm not remembering, but yeah. Um, yeah, because they started out with like a uh, like a Halo, not Master Chief guy. Oh, no. Was that Dead or Alive? Arbiter. <laughs> Uh, no, they, yeah. yeah, started. Okay, so Arbiter was the the only Halo character they had. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one we have in KI. Okay. Yeah, there there was there was Master Chief or a version, not John three seventeen, but a uh, Spartan was yeah. in Dead or Alive. That might be what you're. Yes, thinking that, I was yeah. thinking of that. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that was so fun, and uh, you know, all people always ask us if we're we were down to do more KI, and the answer is uh, absolutely we are. Um, we just have to find like. You know, one Microsoft has to be like, okay, let's do KI again. That's the most. That's the most they, important part. They, and then, I think you would have to um, to want to ask them first. It could be, you know, a lawsuit if you don't. Oh yeah, you, we might need permission to, yeah. to build someone else's IP. Yeah, as many as many um, NFT funders are learning now. <laughs> you might, you can't, IP law extends everywhere. It's hey, like, um, yeah. hey, you want you want some legal advice, Dave? Here, you know how I'd Please. solve that problem. I love free legal hey. advice. <laughs> free legal advice right now it, the, again free legal advice not as good as season one of uh rumble Force out now but no, absolutely not make a game called lethal instinct 
Ooh, then there's a character okay. called Skeleton. Then there's okay. a guy called Lava Boy. Then there's a yeah. go a guy called Cold Man and, yeah. and a I mean, Werewolf. We use all the code. We use the code still that we have. Laying Fuck, on you think Microsoft knows anything yeah. about code? The, what are those? The, they only make we, Microsoftwares. Yeah, they don't know about yeah, we, big games. We pirate our own game. Let's go. Exactly. Let's F and go. Yeah. That's 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 something that um um movie two hundred IQ play. By movie way. studios and record labels have done before, Dave. Why not bring it yeah. to video games? Pirate yeah, your own shit. Your leak it. Gus. You're, yeah, you're one step ahead, Gus. That's five head right there. That's 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 the yeah. Brazil galaxy level right here. <laughs> and so uh, after you know learning everything you could about uh, fighting games, you decided to distill all that knowledge into the most accessible video game ever made, which has fighting in it. Because again, yeah. I, I want to make it sure. How do I get? First of all, before you introduce people to the concept of the great dive kick, which I really love, and it's a great uh, yeah, party yeah. game to this day for people that you know usually will go like, ah, I don't play video games. I go like, well, you can play this one. It's really easy. Yeah, you can play this one. But yeah. first of all, how do I get a dive kick controller? I want a, uh, I want oh. a dive kick controller. So you, we have two flavors of them. We have the big kick boxes, which yeah. were the big ones we had at shows and stuff, and those are all gone. Ah, um, I. I, I I think I think we had one left in the studio, and I think someone walked off with it. Oh no! Because so I, I was gonna yeah. go like bring one to Rio. I'll I'll go yeah. to Rio to get a controller. We we can make more for sure. Um, Hitbox did those for us. If you're oh, th those guys Hitbox. are great. I, I remember yeah, I interviewed them at Revelation in like 2012, like when they were still like they they weren't yeah, yeah, making yeah. a bunch of them still. But I love the yeah. concept. Yeah, have yeah, you had a little? I remember we got a little grumpy at each other about something, but they're they're great. They they right. did good work for us, and uh, they uh, we were super happy with those. And then we did like a kick pad, which is like a joy pad. <laughs> um, I actually tweeted a photo of this out the other day, and like it's just a little. It's a it's like a PS3 game pad with just two buttons on it and a D pad in the middle. Nice. And that's actually really useful to play the game on as well. So yes. So for me, for me, the best version of Dive Kick is the Vita version for my money. The Vita, I never played that. Why, why is the Vita version? Because so it, it's one. It just I could do it on you know like whatever. But like if you're next to somebody on a plane, it had friend mode. So like I'm using like the, oh. the two buttons here. I'm using like two buttons on the D pad, and you're using like the triangle and the square. And you can play each other sitting next to each other. It was genius. Dave, 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 come on. Yeah. Bring it to Switch. That sounds uh, you know, like we, great. I think use we're not cases. done with dive kick in the long view. Like the Good. long view, we're not done with dive kick. Like I, I think, g given what we know now about just you know, we learned so much since we did dive kick. I think you know, there's definitely you know, I don't know when it might not be until ten years from now or whatever. But like, we're going to take another crack at that because that game is amazing. It's one of my favorite games we've ever done. Like it is, I, it is one of I, my I favorite so fighting games. Yeah. yeah, it's. So. As someone who always liked fighting games, but was never that good at them, and and really uh, played mostly for for like the the characters and the story and, and stuff like that, yeah. and then you know as I got older, I was like, what if I could get good at them? Um, yeah. When when Dive Kick came around, which is um, this page says 2013, and I'm gonna that believe right. it. Um, yeah, that sounds right. Uh, it's it's a game where you honestly only have two buttons: one is dive, one is kick. And it is kind of made for you to understand that fighting games, and a lot of games really, uh, are just very um, prettified versions of rock, paper, scissors. So yeah. you got to know what it's to do uh, in response to your characters, uh, um, in your opponent's you know, movements. And you also have to be able to strategize of like, if I do this, what can he do to counter? Is, is yeah. it kind of that the, the, the deal behind it? Yeah, it's it's like you know, there's a lot of similarities between Rumbleverse and Dive Kick. Like mm -hmm. with Dive, they're, they're motivated by different things, but a lot of similarities, nevertheless. Like with Dive Kick, we wanted to trick people into liking fighting games, right? Nice. Essentially, like fighting games, because like they got over the years, they got more complex, but they didn't necessarily get better in in some people's view, right? Yeah, and it's a really if you if you haven't been playing Street Fighter since four and you try to get into six, good luck. Right, because yeah. people that have been playing it for twenty years, just the execution level you need to be competitive is like through the roof, and you know n not many people will stick with it for the number of hours you need to put in to get it. 
And so and like, just but, the amount know, of like combos and special moves. Like yeah. to this day, I'm one of yeah. those people that can only play Street Fighter with like Ryu or yeah. like I'm a Shoto boy, as they say. Like, yeah, I can too. play. Yeah, yeah. I can play dudes that do Hadoukens, and that's yep. it. Yeah, but it's like you know, with with that, it's like how do we? What, so like what 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 Adam was thinking about Adam Hart, the creator of it. Like what he was thinking about, it's like how do you footsies is fun like just footsies is fun and so he kind of want to make footsies the video game right because right. like what, what if fighting games are about at the end of the day right it's about understanding like hey if character one is here and character two is here at this distance this character has like he has an overhead a mid and a low attack and this character has just a low attack they could do that's viable at this range so this character has a huge advantage so he wants to be this close so if you're good as this character you should either back up or get closer. It's so it's about trying to keep ideal spacing so you have the most options. Yeah, that's what fighting games are about at the end of the day, right? Like giving yourself the most options available so your so your opponent can't has a hard time guessing what you're going to do or reading what you're going to do. And so we made a game just that's just that, right? With dive kick, and yeah. you know it met some level of success, um, but I never felt it met the level of success it deserved. And when I say we're going to take another whack at it, I think that's through the lens we want to do it through one day. Nice. Yeah, and, and I think that either, especially 2013, that's when, you know, the, 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 the new fighting game community was kind of starting to, like, uh, yeah. like heat up again. Like, stuff like Evo was starting to get, like, really big, and now that we have, like, Twitch is really huge and, and, and things like that, and, you know, you have a Street Fighter Six coming out really, really quickly after a Street yeah, Fighter yeah. Five. You have all these different uh, fighting games with huge, um, you know, huge communities. I think a new dive kick um and again just free advice here to dive to kick just like that yeah we we were gonna call it um i i, I can't give this one we already have the name picked out I, <laughs> okay. i'm not gonna spoil it though it's really fun. all right okay yeah. all right yeah. so and people can still still play dive kick right that, that doesn't have anything yeah, yeah. that expired Team playstation xbox I, I believe it's backwards compatible i believe it's all there yeah um the steam is steam, I don't know, think... like some some things have been aged super well in the steam version like yeah, I have, uh, that's the version it, I have. But yeah, the menus runs. are pretty janky. They feel they feel really dated at this point. But that's why I brought it up. Fantastic. It's janky. Yeah. <laughs> it's janky. <laughs> the, game, the menus are super janky. Yeah, yeah. Because like they were even they're even worse when we first shipped. Because like um, we we made a creative decision in the beginning that like even if you were playing on like a uh, like a, a joy like a regular pad like the the D pad and the sticks would do nothing. They would literally yes. do nothing. And so to navigate the menu, you had two buttons, and you'd, if you want to scroll left, you'd go like, boom, you tap it, tap it. And then when you get the thing you want to select, you'd hit both at once. Yes. And what we really underestimated was average gamers' ability to hit two buttons at the exact same time. Because <laughs> you, you'd have to have some leeway there on what is we, the same time. We got so much feedback the first day that people couldn't get past the press start screen. Like Wow. Like some people were still hit them both at the same time. You're like, I am. I'm like, you're super not if you're not getting through it. And so uh, I was, added... <laughs> I was just amazed the first time I read it on the PC version that it defaulted to low graphics se se um, settings on my PC, which is, I don't know if you remember this, but the, the graphic setting on PC is just low, medium, high. And it's just yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. those old flash games, which is, it gets less <laughs> blocky each yeah, each yeah. step. And I was like very offended of like, I have a 1070 GTX. How dare you? Yeah, that, that's a game we did with uh, duct tape and bailing wire. Right. Nice. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of what we put out and, and that we got, you know, it was the first original game we made with our own money. We published ourselves, we marketed ourselves, we sold ourselves, we did everything. And um, gosh, we just poured a lot in that game. And I fully acknowledge that game is filled to the brim with jank. But uh, in a very charming way, I think. Yeah, I think some of the charm has kind of faded over the years, frankly. Like, I, I think some of the humor, uh, you know, I think maybe we wouldn't make the same joke. Well, I know we wouldn't make I think, the same jokes today. I think know? not only that, it's just, it's just that there's a lot of, as someone who is not also not super into fighting games in that community, yeah. there was a bunch of things in that game that I was like, oh, I think yeah. that is a reference to something. Yeah. I don't know what do not, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that meme, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, 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 it's kind of weird duality with Dive Kick, too, because we made the most casual fighting game of all time, and then we marketed it to just fighting game people. Yes. Which, you know, kind of question the wisdom of that in hindsight. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so 
like I said, there's other, there's a lot we could do differently, but I think we'll just, uh, instead of wanting to do it over, we'll just do it again, but do it right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So n- less jank this time, but I guess this is the perfect, uh, um, transition to, uh, what we're going to do now, which is play Rumbleverse. We're going to play Rumbleverse. You're going to be my coach. You're going to okay. be, you know, you know, uh, please backseat game all you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're here right. to help me out. To really get the 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 you know the um, the hard paper the the what, did I say yeah, hard yeah, paper scissors rock you, paper you play, si- scissors you, of it all you, you sounds like you played a handful of games to date so you know the basic mechanics yes I know the basic okay. mechanics I think the the game is is really good at communicating what you do without having like a tutorial and stuff um and I haven't used weapons that much that was something I was gonna tell you because I don't know part of me just if whenever I got a special move, I really want to be able to use it, so yeah, I never yeah. Uh, yeah. equip weapons. But uh, but yeah, like I, I know I know how the game works. Uh, and so two things, I, I would encourage you to go check out the playground mode. There's a lot oh, of really okay. subtle things that that'll teach you that you may not know otherwise. And then um, the weapons, you can put weapons in your pocket. Yes, so, I, I know. Yeah. I have done that. I usually put a lot of turkey legs in my pocket because oh, that's, uh, that's the default. Yeah, that's the yeah. that's the safe thing for sure. Especially because I, I don't block. I don't block like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I need those turkey legs. I'm usually like a three tur- three chicken. It's chicken, by the way, Gus. I wasn't gonna correct it at first, but it's, I it's I thought chicken. because of the size it would be no, it's, a... ch- it's it's chicken legs. I I like chicken better than turkey. Then uh, I'm well, good. Then you're set. Then you're set. What is the season? Season one started. Is that it? So Bumble, why didn't you tell RB me that? Hit, why didn't yeah, you tell me hit that? Hit RB once. And, well, I'll give you a brief overview of the battle pass. Hit RB once. Right. So here you are. So this is all the content. All the free tiers you get is you just kind of grind out the levels through the battle pass. Right. But if you buy the battle pass, you get you get every every item in every tier. Nice. Um, and go to go to level nine. This is my favorite thing in the game. Level nine. Okay. So oh, look at that. Let's see the triggers. Uh, oh my god. Oh, you're an eighty now. Oh, so, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go, <laughs> okay. Go, yeah. I I, I go, saw go it, those were pages. Okay. Kind there of. We go. Kind sorry. Of, no. Uh, level nine. Okay. Look at, look at that hat. Ah. Oh. It's like it's like it's like uh it's uh Japanese hibachi hat. Yeah, That's I was gonna say like, like did did Benny Hanna not want to sponsor this? Yeah. You know. Not yet. I mean, they're not a sponsor yet. That's not, really not yet. About. Not yet. If yeah, we, not if yet. we learned anything with Fortnite, is that eventually? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. So. All right. Let me see. I'm just gonna press buy right now to see how much it costs in. Um. No. This is how much yeah. do I? What? It's, how, it's ten. It's ten U.S. dollars. Yeah, but it it would probably give me the the price in 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 Brazilian. Yeah. Whereas, but I don't I know. hope so. Yeah. Yeah. You oh, okay? So I don't. So do I have to buy the bucks to buy the? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, okay. But the good so, thing, the good thing with the battle pass is if you play if you finish the battle pass, you get fifteen hundred brawler buck brawler bills out of it. Uh huh. And so if you're disciplined, you don't buy anything else. You only have to buy the first one, and then you can keep battle passes going for season two, three, oh, four nice. for free. So how yeah. many uh, brawler bills is is the battle pass? Maybe a thousand. Thousand. Okay, so it's like season. thirty thirty reais. It's 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 fine. Yeah. It's way less than ten dollars actually. <laughs> so okay, good for me. Yeah. Uh, all know. right. Let's see how long it's going to take to find a match. If you're watching this, don't worry. If it takes too long, uh, we're going to edit it out, but we're still going to show you. I, I think this will take around a minute 15 today. A minute 15. Do. All right. That's my guess. This it's is, over- I, I, if you, if it's a minute 15 on the dot, this is going to be, this is going to be so good. Yeah. But just so Brazil I know. Brazil is actually, there's a lot of people playing in Brazil, by the way. I, yeah. I, I, you know, like I, that's like, I, when, and when everything is working, I, it, it doesn't take me longer than than like a minute thirty seconds to find people, and pings are actually good, which makes me think they're in Brazil. Um, yeah, we we play a lot of games here. We play a lot of yeah, video yeah. games, especially well, if they're free. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, also so much YouTube content um, from not just Brazil but all of kind of like um, you know Latin America. It's it's pretty yeah. cool. Oh, I bet it's it's like it it's it's like it's a fun looking game and oh, you know, like. We found your game now, so it's definitely going to be under 115. Oh, okay, cool. Definitely, but I believe it will be under 115. Nice. And this is ba- a barely modified character. So I really liked the one it randomly generated for me, but I, I unlocked some some golden gloves and stuff, so I added it to my character here. But but yeah, like I, you know, I'm really ready for this to to if it if it gets really um really famous and really big. And you guys do like a animated show, 
All I yeah. want is um, is a role, just doing a voice okay. for any character. Fair enough. And um, either in English or Portuguese or both, as Vin Diesel does in in the you, you be the <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. A plucky upstart, Gus will will make an appearance. Uh, cool. Um, um it's um, and if we can, we should call the character Gus from Brazil, so we can call it GFP. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna te okay. uh, teach you one one habit out the gates that most people right. like. If you're just learning the game, it's like you know the, the standard three strike combo, right? Yeah, yeah. This yeah. guy's doing doop doop doop. Yep. So the, most people just mash that out, and then they kind of get buffered. And so if the first one gets blocked, you still do the second and the third one. Yeah. But then you're gonna get punished for that. If you don't mash, like you can confirm hit. So like you can see if you hit or not before you hit. The button to hit the second one. Okay. So if you get if you get in the habit of that, you'll have the most options possible. But you All can't right, cancel so, it after the second hit. Uh no, you, I mean you could totally, right? You you could you could just not hit it again and do something else. But yeah, go land in yeah, go land in tennis courts. This is, this will okay. be pretty hot, but it'll be okay. Alright. Uh, that's a pretty good one. So you have two versions of the Diamond Crusher. Okay. Um, so, that's fine. It's, it doesn't hurt to have two. Yeah, w w whenever you get something else here, we can just... Okay, let's see what, what this is. Yeah, go over the go over Emerald Crusher. Yeah. Yeah. So those are both vicious attacks, so those are both grabs. So you know, like the rock, paper, scissors of this game, right? Oh, my God. Oh. Body this guy. Oh. Like, whenever anyone flashes red, they're doing a vicious attack, and that's uh, unblockable. Okay. So... Both of your, just both of move your out specials are unblockables. Um, Ooh. He's scared already. Look at him. He doesn't want it. No, come back. Oh, <laughs> Let me. These potions, um, what do you call them officially? The, the uh, They're, they're, they're uh, the pro, uh, stamina or protein powders, I think, is work. Yeah, yeah. I really like to just. I just like to yeah. spend a bunch of the early game getting as much of them as I can for like either damage or stamina or whatever I can find. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, oh, oh! Okay, let's, yeah, there's let's, the let's chair this guy since you said it's your favorite weapon. I think he just broke the chair hitting you. Oh, there you got some. Nice. No, no. Ah, now, yeah. now he has the chair. It's a problem. Oh. Yeah, so so basically the way the priority system works mm -hmm. is weapon has very good priority. Oh. So, like, so the way the priority system kicks in when two attacks land at the same time, the attack with the higher yes. priority will uh, will win. And since and weapon beat vicious attack, and that pros okay. what happened there. And there's a couple, and there's ways when two attacks hit and 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 they just cancel each other out, right? Yeah, if they're the same priority, that's a clash. And that that does happen pretty frequently. Um, oh, so he's supered Ooh. up. Careful. Oh. Uh, Woo. Yeah, there's probably benefits to just relocating altogether. Yeah. Let's see what's up there. Not much. That, uh, that fence was angry at you for elbow dropping it. Oh, I'm sorry, fence. Oh, you gave your chair back. Look at that. Yes. All right. This dude is going to get chaired. Nice. Oh, it's broken now. Yeah, so anytime anyone does wake up. Um, oh, okay. KO'd. Oh, that was. Yeah, we were, neither of us were keeping an eye on the health there. We should. That was a bad job by me. I should have been keeping an eye on the health. Bad yeah, health. I was not as well. Okay, so. Um, usually what I've been doing, I think you saw when I do the, the three hit combo is that they go down and I just jump and do an elbow. Is that the best follow up for what I'm doing? So there? For the, for the normal three hit combo? No, because they have enough time to recover and get out of the way uh, and that's, then they can punish you missing. So, right. but the, the, the X, X, Y combo, that's the one that launches the person back over your head uh, that you do have enough time to do an elbow drop with. Uh, cool. And so... Do you really like that? So that's a really easy four hit confirmable combo. Nice. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try to do more XXY than triple. Yeah. Just three X's. Okay. And um, the way if if you're doing XXY and uh, XXX is coming out, like that happens to a lot of people. And what you're what's happening is you're mashing X and you're not even aware of it. Right, and you're right. getting like the, the first three X's are coming in before the Y. Yes. That that is um, something that uh, probably happens to me a lot in a lot of fighting games, not just this one. Yeah, it's very normal. Yeah. yeah. So those those targets, anytime you land on those, um, a goodie comes out. But the higher up you elbow drop it from, the better the thing. Ah, oh, 
I didn't know that that affected yeah. it. I thought it was just like the the color and size on the box itself was. Yep. You know, yeah, the, the the higher up the uh, elbow drop is from, the better the reward pops up in the target. Right. And do the colors on what what are the colors on the special moves mean? There's green, um, purple, and so, the, and so blue, basically right? purple is better than blue, and blue is better than green generically. Oh, okay. Um, there's 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 like some greens I really like, and I would like like I'll keep like a green punchline over like a blue bad breath, for example. Right. Um, but some of that's just personal preference. But generically speaking, it speaks to the rarity and the quality of the moves. Mm. Yeah, but there's that's one of the free tiers I think, maybe the first free tier. You see a lot of people running around with that outfit on, so. So, so I'm, you're saying I'm, I'm basic. <laughs> I would never say that, Gus. I would never, ever say that. So is there anything you want me to practice here? And also, I think we, sh we should talk about strategies for where to land. Um, yeah. So the, um, well, let's, before you shoot into space, like, let's, let's pull up, hit the, uh, hit the pause button. Uh -huh. And we'll see where the circles are at. Okay. Um, so, like, w w w when you're in the cannon, I'm saying. That's when you oh, okay, see okay. circles. Okay, okay. For now, be, uh, good. Yeah. Let's, let me try to practice the XXY combo you said. So, yeah. X, X. Ooh, I kind of missed the timing there. Okay, so this is that XXY. That was three right? X's right there. That was the XXY. So, that, that, that's triple X. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, let me try again. Yeah. I think there it was one uncanny. where I got it because he got dizzy. He got the, like, the green stars around his head. Yeah. Oh. So let's try again. Oh, it got interrupted. Yeah. Okay. People on the barge so, are just rude. They can't just let you yeah. train and go in peace. But this is. Oh, yeah. All so, right. So if you go to, you know, if you want something to like where you can like really loot up pretty slowly. Yeah, I think that's. It's okay. My, so my style. Right, so we're gonna go to Brawl Street area over there. Brawl so Street. We'll okay. So let's we'll go to the left. Yeah. Sort of going left. Okay. We're gonna go. We're gonna go very deep. You see all the smokestacks? Uh huh. In the back? Yeah. Let's land by those. Because that should be pretty, pretty low key. Not a lot of people, and give you some time to loot up and get some stuff. Nice. That Grapple City Tower in the middle—that that's the hot drop. That's like the PUBG school. Right yeah. There. And it's easy to get like just punched yeah, out of go, that tower. Hit, 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 yeah. Start free, free falling. Fall? You might go in the water. Okay. Hey. Oh yeah, yeah, we know that. Waters. Before. You now want to go in the water? Yeah. This reminds me of one of my favorite games, Pilot Wings, on the Super Nintendo as well. So again, you know what? Points. I, that, I bought I bought that in Mario the day I got my N64, and I never, ever got into it. I really wanted to like it, but I never, ever got into it. I really like Pilot Wing 64 as well. And it has a super chill soundtrack that I still, like, listen to to this day to, like, kind of chill at home, like, on a Sunday. It's it's good. It's it's definitely – I can't compare to anything else. Like, the other day I was, I was playing <clears throat> some games on Twitch, and someone said, oh, play – uh, Kaze no Naten on on PS One, which is like um, like more a, boxes on the roof up there. A yeah. balloon game, but it's it's okay. just not the same. There's nothing like Pilot Wings. Yeah, it uh, is super unique, right? Was okay, there so ever another one. There was the the 3DS one was the last one, and it's okay. it's good, but it's it's the it's the least fun of all the three ones. So this one, this drink, I should just save for later, right? Because it has like a it's a time yeah thing. stamina regen, it buffs stamina regen. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, so let's see what we got here. Whoops. That's a very similar version. That's a worse version of the re the yeah, other so movie. Yeah, yeah. That. So put that down. Let, let, just, uh, the powder. Yeah, if you're just getting started, I'd also recommend the green powders, because um, those those are just give you more health. Yeah. And those make you super super tanky. So. I'll just drink whatever powder I can get, because I don't want to yeah. get to like late. Like late game and not have like everyone. I feel like everyone else is gonna have that. Yeah, there's one more box on this roof up here. Uh, okay. Tackle's pretty good. Yeah. Let me put that there. All right. Yeah, and then just go in the neighborhood down there and loot up a little bit more. Gold boxes obviously theoretically have the best loot. Ooh, damage. Well, yeah, swap I'm gonna have a lot of that. health. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the way the way the powders work too is each one gives you a ten percent um, buff, but if you have five of any one powder, the fifth one gives you a twenty percent buff, 
And if you have all 10 of one color, uh, it gives you a 25% buff. Oh, cool. So it's like and a so, poker hand. Yeah, so I really like my, my strategy is I usually go like five greens or reds, depending on what I'm what I'm finding, um, just so I get that extra 10% for free. And then I go three and two on whatever I didn't get is three, and then stamina is two. I just want to have a little extra stamina. Cool. So should I get the uppercut to replace um, the tackle? So right now you've got one. See that that red flare on the tackle move? Yeah. That means it's a, it's a vicious grab. And so you, you don't want two things. In my opinion, you don't want two things that are the same. And uppercut and wreck shock would both be two strikes. So it's good right. that you have like one strike and one grab. I think that's good. Good. Yeah. That'll make it easier to play rock, paper, scissors with people. And vicious uh, also means it's unblockable. So it's even better yeah, than high like, priority, which was the uppercut, right? Yeah, it's unblockable grab. So if you hit, hit start button real quick. Um, start. So on the left side there is the priority system. So like your uh, your basic, so you're just your generic Y button is the lowest priority. Then like that uh, that tackle would be special vicious. Your generic punch like your XXY or XXX is next. Special strike is like rex shock or like the uppercut. Um, weapon is next. Then power move and then the super move. But like so it's like well why would I ever want a vicious? Again it's just because it's low priority doesn't mean it's bad. Like if someone's blocking, you you get through that with a vicious. Right? Oh, okay, so, yeah, yeah. So so the yeah. priority is just when these we're are matching. Yeah, these are if two if two if two attacks hit at the same time. Yeah, it goes to that priority system for which one wins. And so, if they're yeah, the yeah. same, then it just it, it basically kind of does a reset and no one gets hurt. Yeah, one interesting thing about the the powders too and the health. If you're starting and if you play duos, instead of having ten powder slots, you only have eight, and then uh, you also start off with a little less health. Um, because basically, it's like the matches. If we didn't nerf people, we found the matches and duos were just going on forever, ever, ever. So we just need to, to nerf people just a little, little bit. Right. Oh. Ah. <laughs> a little chair and chair violence. Oh, there you go. Unblockable oh. chair. Yeah, so there you go. So another good thing to do here, especially when you're learning how to play, like let these two fight. Okay. And then, and then like, you know, don't let it finish. But when you see like, okay, this guy just attacked, you know you can probably punish him because he's going to recover from his oh. attack. Um, so that guy probably wanted to super you there. Watch out. Yeah, you're going to want. Should I super as well or no? Uh, it's so kind it's, of... it's a, yeah, so super does two things. One, you could pop it now and you'd get Ooh. healing. And you get all the other benefits, but also if you if you if you die, and your super meter's full, you come back to life. Oh, um, uh, okay. And so it's like it's kind of the push pull. I personally spend it whenever I get it, just for the healing and the stat buffs. Yeah. Um, but uh, there is some people that just prefer, like that safety. If I just get ambushed out of nowhere and whooped up on, I know I'm coming back and can recover. Yes, yeah, you know, look between the chicken and the the thing. Now you're set. So. Ooh. Yeah, but, yeah, that's that is not that right there is a good example of how not to use the Y button with super. <laughs> like, all right, you want to like bait out and attack with them, or even even better yet, watch people like in a fight, and then when you when they're gonna be vulnerable, Ooh. that's when you hit them with the Y, right? Right. Because uh, otherwise, a good player will just punish those whiffs all day, and you'll end up uh, kind of in worse shape than when you started. Oh. Threw the powder at you. Disrespectful. There you go. Uh, I was trying to do XXY, but I ended yeah. up just doing a Y after the combo. Yeah, it's a, it's a little tricky to get the timing of it, Ooh. but it's definitely like, again, like if you're not, Ow. you think about it as like, wait till you see the first one hit, then hit X again. And when you see that one hit, then hit Y. Right. So just like trying to get the timing of it. Just to like use, vi use the visuals for your timing. Well, that's so that what you just did there, Y on wake up. Is an unblockable like gut uh like you know lower below the belt shot, and it stuns for a long time. So you can use that to set up like other attacks. Yeah, let's get out of here. Ooh, yeah, I gotta run get away, out of run here. Run away, run away. No, 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 no. Ma'am, ma'am, no, no. <laughs> ah, it's a Wendy's, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. wow. Tough break uh, there, guys. Tough break. Yeah, I don't think I don't think we're gonna get to number one right now. Yeah, um, I, I think we're, we're going to be a fortune, but we can we can, you know, we can run duos, and I can get you I can get you up to pace here with some duos maybe later. 
Okay, uh, but that was number ten. You know, we got yeah. top ten. You know, that it was, was respectable. Yeah. The thing, yeah. the thing, the one thing that sucks about doing what you—well, I shouldn't say sucks, but like the price you pay for the strategy of like I'm going to loot up and loot up. Like this game really incentivizes combat because you our perk system, right? Like as you do damage, you'll get perks added to your character, and those perks, like if you're fighting, like if you're late game, and you don't have any perks. You're fighting people that have many, many, many perks, and they just have a supreme advantage to you at that point. So um, it, may, it may, makes it a little tough. Yeah, that's that's what I still need to like get into of like what exactly am I getting when yeah. I just KO people because like yeah, surely yeah. Sh shit is going on, but when I'm in the middle of it, it's, it, it's kind of hard yeah. to. Yeah. It's hectic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would encourage you or anybody that wants to check the game out, like spend a little time. Like, play, you know, it's it's playground isn't for everybody, but if I find almost everyone gets something out of it for whatever time they spend in there, right? Yeah, I'm and gonna then, I'm gonna check it out. And yeah. when is cool. season one coming out? Oh, season one. I'm glad you asked. We haven't, how, I'm so bad at job. I haven't talked about this yet. Season one dropped yesterday, August 18th. Awesome. So, that is great. Yeah, um, yeah. If you're watching the free version of this, it has been a fortnight since it came out. Uh, so oh, you can play right now. <laughs> well played. Well played. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, and uh, once uh, you got some more jank in the pipeline, or when we play some duos, we can do that as some bon bonus content. And there we like, go. I'll, I'll get the season one content going, so we can do like we can both have characters all uh, done up with the the season one stuff. Yeah, you know, you called. I don't know if this is on the show or not, but there was a point there where Dave was calling my character a little basic. He was like, oh, the, that not stuff. what I said. Those were your words. Those were your words. <laughs> All right. Fine. Thank you so much. I know you got to go. Um, so thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much pleasure. for watching. If you're And if you're watching this when it came out for subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. I'm sure there was some extra content. I think there was a huge conversation about uh, the Fast and the Furious, which is going to be bonus content for uh, subscribers. And uh, we're going to keep the free version more about video games and um um what what the what, um, um uh the wrestlemania would just play <laughs> rumbleverse yes rumbleverse Rumble yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and we didn't even get to talk about the first time we ever met in person which is not, not when you think it is it was actually when you were demoing the connect game rec uh racketeer racketeer yeah really? which was really wow. really fun connect game um and you demoed it uh i remember it because in retrospect i was like oh he was the very tall man that was showing me to play that <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> all right dave fun. i like the game i'm gonna hit, hit stop here on the recording and i'm gonna say goodbye to dave again offline like we do uh here on the show goodbye <laughs> <laughs>